Hey, welcome back. Amanda and Allison here with you today. We work for Stark Parks in the Education Department. So we're bringing you another pop quiz and the topic today is migratory bird calls. So this time of year is my favorite time of year because all of our migratory birds are returning from their wintering grounds. We are getting ready to celebrate World Migratory Bird Day on Saturday, May 9th. It is always the second Saturday of every year. And we celebrate how these birds connect our world because they spend their summers in one place and they spend their winters someplace else. The five bird calls we're going to be quizzing you on today are migratory birds that spend their summers here in Ohio. So you have the chance to see them from this time of year all the way until they leave at the end of the summer. Awesome. Okay, so pens and paper ready. Okay, get ready to scribble down these answers. And these are going to be a little tougher. These mm -hmm. aren't going to be calls we hear all the time. Yeah, not as much practice with these ones. Right, right. Okay, paper's ready. Let's go ahead and listen to number one. Awesome. Okay. Let's take a listen to number two. Sounds like a whole conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, number three. So pretty, I like that. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite ones to hear. Yeah. Uh, this next one, let's take a listen to number four. Try and get that one one more time. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, number four, last one. Last one, number five. Awesome. Okay, so that is definitely one that I recognize <laughs> that I hear all the time. Okay, so swap papers if you don't trust your family member to keep score correctly. Okay, <laughs> let's find out these answers. So let's go back to number one. Our number one, let me get in here, our number one for this one very, very brightly colored, the Baltimore Oriole. Yeah, so the Baltimore Oriole, um, the males and females both have slightly different colors. The males are much more of that vibrant orange and black. Um, so the females are a little bit less bright. Now, to find these birds, you want to look high up in the trees. They love to perch high up in the trees and you'll sometimes see them hopping around up there foraging for insects. They also like to eat fruits and berries. They're often looking for the ripest, darkest colored fruits. Um, they spend their summers here, but they spend their winters in Central America. They are usually found in woodlands and along coffee and cacao plantations. So cool. they're a pretty cool bird. Awesome. Okay, oh, let's take a peek at that bird. Oh, yes. This is not my video, but this is what I watched one doing this morning. <laughs> really, so cool to see. Mm -hmm. 
so beautiful. Okay, so number two. Number two is the rose-breasted grosbeak. This is probably my favorite springtime um, migrant that we get. Um, the males and the females, just like our Orioles, they look different. So the males have that black back, the white belly, and that red patch on their chest. Where the females are brown and covered in stripes, um, they're the ones that are doing a lot of the incubation. So they're not quite as bright. Um, their large beak tells us that it eats seeds. So that beak is an excellent nutcracker to open those seeds up. Uh, they're about the size of a robin. They spend their winters in South America and they spend their time in forests and semi-open areas. In addition to seeds, they also eat a lot of insects and berries, especially in the spring. So most of what they are feeding their babies are those insects that they're catching. Awesome, they're just beautiful. They really are. I love to watch um, to watch the males singing. We see them very often at Sippo Lake Park, yeah. um, especially hiking on the trails back behind the Wildlife Center. Awesome. Okay, number three is the indigo bunting. Uh, this bird is absolutely beautiful. Um, the male is that vibrant blue color, and the female, she looks different from the male, as with our other birds. Uh, she's that she's much more of a drab brown color. Um, these birds, you can often see them perched high in places that are open. So you may see them on a telephone wire on the top of a tree. Um, they are very often singing from those treetops. The, they migrate to and from their wintering grounds at night. Uh, scientists believe they use the stars to help them to navigate so they end up where they need to go. They eat insects, seeds, and berries, and they like to live where the fields meet the forest. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Oh, yeah. Okay, number four, the common yellow throat. Yes, so the common yellow throat is a type of warbler. Um, the male and the female, again, look different. The male has that black mask, and the female doesn't have it. Um, but they are, so they look a little bit different. They're small, they're smaller than a sparrow. Um, they're very, very vocal and they are found in open habitats like brushy fields and the edges of wetlands. Uh, they eat a lot of insects and spiders and they spend their winters in the Southern United States, Mexico and Central America. Wow, they're beautiful, these tiny little guys out there. They are. I had one singing in the field next to my next to my house and it was very fun to try to find him. Okay, um, okay. So number five is the killdeer. So the killdeer is a shorebird so they have those long kind of stilt like legs and this shorebird isn't um, as dependent on the water as many other shorebirds are. We very often see these on lawns, golf courses, um, athletic fields like baseball fields, parking lots. They're a robin sized bird and they get their name from the call they make. So that call that we heard, it kind of sounds like someone saying kill deer, kill deer. Uh, they're a medium distant migrant. So they migrate to the Southern United States and Mexico. Um, they spend a lot of time on the ground where they're looking for insects and um, invertebrates, things like snails and worms. And they are pretty cool when you get to see their babies. So unlike the other birds that we saw, these baby birds, when they hatch, they're already covered in fluffy down. All of the other birds we talked about, their babies don't have any feathers. These birds can walk basically the day they hatch. And they look almost exactly like their parents. So they will spend um, about a month running around with their parents on the ground, um, already looking for food. So I love to watch them yeah. um, as they're going around in this video. It's just so sweet what this, how this little one's just going to go nestle. So we hear all the time because they are, you know, a little closer to us, even though they're a shorebird. That sound may sound very familiar to you hearing it in your mm -hmm. or anything. So. You know, if you want to practice these, listen to these calls over and over, we are using allaboutbirds.org. Um, that is from Cornell. 
You can also use it on your phone. They have a free app called Merlin, like the wizard. So feel free to check those out if you would like to practice these calls even more. Because uh, these are five that we don't hear very often. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us for Pop Quiz Migratory Bird Calls. Bye. Bye.